education at PCR has a long tradition. And if you would ask me what would be the main ingredients of PCR education, I would say there are at least <clears throat> three crucial elements. The first is that any PCR educational format starts directly in the middle of everyday practice with a problem or a dilemma that is being addressed by many peers around the world. And that is the second element. What PCS strives to do is to bring in many different opinions, many different levels of expertise from many different regional backgrounds. Now this brings different aspects to a common shared problem in the cat lab and can help us find the best solutions. And the third element I would say is exactly this. It is this ability of PCR to generate consensus, to work towards a common solution for a problem identified in the cat lab. And during PCR sessions at EuroPCR, for example, what we all try to do is reach the common ground and then leave the room with at least an opinion that is uh, consensual and that brings in many different aspects from different parts of the world. So these three ingredients, starting with a dilemma that is practical in the cat lab, involving as many and as broad of opinion-based and evidence-based as possible and striving towards a common solution, these three elements bring, I think, PCR uh, education to a level that is really high quality and that is of huge and transformative effect for many peers around the world. Going further in 2023 and as in every new year, we have new challenges to face. And I would say that there are three types, distinct types of challenges we will be facing this year in terms of providing high quality education. The first is that there is a rising demand for uh, good education in terms of expanding indications of new technologies such as TAVI around the world. So you have new centers, new peers uh, coming in touch with this technology and there is a huge need, I think, to uh, provide high quality education. The second type is not to forget our what we consider to be routine corner interventions. And I think that uh, around the world we are indebted to our patients to providing the highest possible quality of these interventions. And that I think is not possible without continuous education that is provided by platforms such as PCR. And third, which is last but not least, is that we should not forget that every year new people, fellows, enter the world of interventional cardiology and that as societies prepare to accept these fellows as new professional members, we should feel at least obliged to provide high quality continuous education that is not only basic but it covers the essentials of our profession to these new members of our community. I think that the big advantage of uh, digital education is its flexibility. When you ask most people will tell you a huge outreach, which of course is true, but I think that the flexibility is one of the key features of digital. When you prepare an in-person congress, you're basically constrained by the physical reality. So you need to prepare in advance how long the session is going to be and what kind of discussions there, there is going to be and so on. In digital, you are flexible in terms of the format from a five minute, just highlighting a specific, very specific feature of a device or a very specific news that you would want uh, to put into the digital space up to a one hour format where you have in-depth coverage of a specific technique. All this in between also is possible and provided by the digital education. So I think that we should try to use these uh, advantages of digital education, which means a very wide outreach, ability to reach a very wide audience with the flexibility of format that can provide tailored education to different types of, uh, of people. And this all together paired with the traditional educational values of PCR, which are created by peers for peers to make the perfect blend.